Welcome to Melbourne, Australia, one of the most livable cities in the world. Having lived in Melbourne for over 20 years, I got to learn what are pure tourist traps and what are truly unique to Melbourne. In this Melbourne travel series, I will show you all of the locations I would bring my non-local friends and family to if they are here for one to four days. I will also share with you why I think these locations are so unique. Whew. Welcome to Curious Nomster. My name is Elaine and I will be your tour guide today. Carry on. If you've missed my previous video, on day one, you can spend a whole day touring around Melbourne city. My travel guide will keep you busy from day to night. Check out that video for what to do on day one after this video. Let's get started with some road trips. You can spend just a day on each of these road trips. Great Ocean Road is a breathtaking coastal drive that winds along the stunning southern coast of Australia and is just over 100 kilometers away from the Melbourne city. Just picture yourself driving alongside the turquoise waters of the southern ocean with dramatic cliffs on the one side and lush rainforest on the other. This is not a drive to be missed. Major landmarks you can find are the iconic 12 apostles, crazy looking limestones, and the Otway National Park, where you can explore the lush greenery and beautiful waterfalls. Great Ocean Road is about 243 kilometers long, but we only drove to Lorne today. Lucky me, today has the best weather. Look! Finally found a beautiful lookout. Sorry if the lighting of the shots are a bit harsh. I thought if we start filming at about four or so, it would be a bit smoother, but the sun is still quite strong. So please bear with me. I always come to this side of town whenever I want a chillaxing road trip. Staring into the ocean with crazy looking cliffs really does something to my soul. Come here around spring or summer. You won't regret it. Located in the southwestern part of Victoria and approximately three hours drive from Melbourne city, Grampians is where you immerse yourself in panoramic views of rugged mountain ranges, cascading waterfalls and ancient rock formations. Also, Grampians has been home to the Dija Burung and Jabwajali people for an astonishing 20,000 years. Grampians is home to 80% of all the rock art found in Victoria. It has been listed on Australia's National Heritage List for its importance in the Aboriginal culture. Grampians are split into three main areas. Northern Grampians include easy walks to Aboriginal rock art sites and more difficult day walks to several exposed mountain peaks. The Central Grampians offers the best selection of two-wheel drive touring, short walks, lookouts, waterfalls and picnic areas. The Southern Grampians is an expansive area offers rugged and remote bushwalks and short walks to view Aboriginal rock shelters. The track we're exploring today is in the Central Grampians, a track called Boronia Track. The reason why we picked this track is because we only have about four hours to film and hike. It is scenic and it's challenging enough. It takes us about three and a half hours to drive back home from here because we don't live close to the city. Baronia Peak is arguably one of the Grampians' best walks and is less popular than some of the other hikes in the region. The entire trail is completed with epic views as you wind your way to the peak and involves a rocky climb to the summit. I don't know how, but we made it. We made it. <laughs> By the way, for those who are driving, if you're driving back home around dusk time, watch out for kangaroos jumping out to the road. Apparently fast vehicles with headlights startle kangaroos and kangaroo are most active around dawn or dusk. I was a little anxious driving back home last time because 
there was actually a kangaroo jumping out in front of the car in front of me. So I was like, crap. Man, I haven't been back here for years. Can't wait to stick my legs out of the train again. Who doesn't love exploring nature on a vintage train? Puffing Billy is a local favourite steam train. It is only one hour east of Melbourne and the most fun way to soak in the breathtaking Dandenong Ranges. It is built in 1900 to serve the local communities that lived in the hills, carrying anything from passengers to timber, livestock, potatoes and plants. You can take the train all the way from Belgrave to Jambrook but today we took the train from Belgrave to Lakeside only. The whole return trip takes only about four hours. As you can see as the train goes past you see a lot of lush greenery. Obviously the steamy train itself is very interesting and the fact that you can stick your legs outside of the train is quite a fun experience as well. But personally what I like about this experience is how the locals are very engaged with the passengers on the train as well. <laughs> Whenever the train goes past, they will always wave at you and say hello. They're so friendly, seriously. So one tip for you guys, I do recommend you to book your Puffing Billy trip as early as possible because it is a very popular place with families, as you can see. All these people paddling along the lake. Personally, I had to book as early as a month in advance, so do bear that in mind. There you have it, four locations in four days. Which of these locations are you most interested to visit? Tell me in the comment below. If you prefer not to do the driving, of course you can join a tour as well. I've tried Klux and Get Your Guides tours and they have tons of options to choose from. See description for links and discount code. Thanks for touring around Melbourne, one of the most livable cities around the world with me. Check out this video next if food and travel is your kind of thing. What's your shoe size? I'm afraid I can't find you a pair of shoes that fit your feet.